This is a Reconstructionist radio production. Please visit calcedon.edu to download or purchase this book. The Philosophy of the Christian Curriculum, Russus J. Rushduni, Ross House Books, Vallecito, California. Part 5 Chapter 3 The Religious Goals of Humanism The concern of John Dewey with religion is too often overlooked because Christians commonly identify religion with supernaturalism. Dewey himself criticized this identification. With this we must agree. Many religions are not supernaturalistic, and even fewer are theistic. Belief in God is not necessary to a religion, as witness Shintoism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, Animism, Humanism, and other faiths. Dewey regarded his position as a religious one. For him, truth came not by revelation, nor from the supernatural, rather the, quote, one sure road, one sure road of access to truth, end quote, is, quote, the road of patient, cooperative inquiry, operating by means of observation, experiment, record, and controlled reflection, end quote. Dewey does not prove this. He assumes it. It is his basic religious faith and presupposition. He begins as a humanist. St. Anselm said, I believe in order that I might understand. Cornelius Van Til has made it clear that all philosophies begin with a prior and religious faith. Dewey's faith is humanistic to the core. He is thus adverse to dogma and doctrine only when it is not humanistic. For him, the, quote, search for God, end quote, is invalid because it involves automatically a denial of his most fundamental faith, the trusted man's intelligence. In his own words, quote, dependence upon an external power is the counterpart of surrender of human endeavour, end quote. Such a quest for certainty from the supernatural is for him a denial of his fundamentalism, a faith in intelligence and natural means of inquiry. But this is not all. For Dewey, as a humanist, the unity of mankind is an unquestioned and dogmatic faith. Anything which divides men between the saved and the lost, or divides reality with such terms as good and bad, true and false, is divisive. Dewey finds it impossible to ignore, quote, the fact that historic Christianity has been committed to a separation of sheep and goats, the saved and the lost, the elect and the mass, end quote. For Dewey, this divisiveness is the ultimate sin. Quote, Spiritual aristocracy, as well as laissez-faire with respect to natural and human intervention, is deeply embedded in its tradition. I cannot understand how any realisation of the democratic ideal as a vital moral and spiritual ideal in human affairs is possible without surrender of the conception of the basic division to which supernatural Christianity is committed. End quote. The goal of history for Dewey is a humanistic New Jerusalem, a millennial regime he calls, together with Graham Wallace and others, quote, the great community, end quote. There is grace in Dewey's religious world, but it comes not from God, but from the human community. Quote, the things in civilization we most prize are not of ourselves. They exist by grace of the doings and sufferings of the continuous human community, in which we are a link, end quote. Let us examine some of the implications of Dewey's faith as they appear in James Bryan Conant. Conant, a scientist, once head of Harvard's chemistry department, then for 20 years president of the university, chairman of the National Research Committee, high commissioner and later ambassador to the German Federal Republic and a member of the General Advisory Commission to the Atomic Energy Commission, wrote several authoritative books on, quote, public, end quote, education, in his autobiography, he sees himself as, quote, social inventor, end quote, and subtitles it, quote, memoirs of a social inventor, end quote. The term fits his role in education. Conant often says that the Christian school has a right to exist, but everything else he says makes clear that the existence of the Christian and private school is an evil, a, quote, dual system of schools, end quote, for all his disclaimers to suppress the independent schools, is, for him, the enemy of American society. Quote, My book, Education in a Divided World, published in 1948, 
was full of good words about American public schools. I had become convinced that the hostile and vocal critics were either misinformed or proponents of a dual system of schools. End quote. Let us examine a critical statement on Conant's study, one in which the implications of humanism for education and the family are openly stated. Quote, Wherever the institution of the family is still a powerful force, as it is in this country, surely inequality of opportunity is automatically, and often unconsciously, a basic principle of the nation. The more favoured parents endeavour to obtain even greater favours for their children. Therefore, when we Americans proclaim an adherence to the doctrine of equality of opportunity, we face the necessity for a perpetual compromise. Now it seems to me important to recognise both the inevitable conflict and the continuing nature of the compromise, end quote. The conflict is, quote, inevitable, end quote. If a, quote, unquote, retreat is to be made, it is apparently not to be by the demand for equality. Since 1948, this demand has been stepped up, and educators have spoken of the necessity of separating at least the ghetto child from his family into campus boarding schools. Conan spoke on April 7th, 1952, on, quote, Unity and diversity in secondary education, end quote, before a meeting of the American Association of School Administrators in Boston, Massachusetts. As a defender of the true faith, humanism, he warned of the enemy at the gate, the Christian school. Quote, but what I am more concerned with in the year 1952 is to make the hostile critics of the public schools in the United States show their colours. One of the most vocal of these is a Protestant clergyman who reveals himself when he writes, quote, The communist is not, as a matter of fact, much of a revolutionist. The communist would only substitute the logical secularism of Karl Marx for the pragmatic secularism of John Dewey, end quote. If this clergyman would start off all his attacks on modern education by stating that for him, secularism and communism are equal dangers, the reader would be in a better position to evaluate what he was about to read, or he might decide to skip it altogether. There are many sincere Protestants, Jews and Catholics who believe that secondary education, divorced from a denominational religious core of instruction, is bad education. They erroneously assume that the tax-supported schools are not concerned with moral and spiritual values. Like all humanists, Conant is given to misrepresenting the Christian position. We do not deny that the tax-supported schools are concerned with moral and spiritual values. We do insist that these humanistic values are anti-Christian and constitute an establishment of religion with the use of our tax funds. It is worthy of note that, when Conant gave this address, 92% of secondary school pupils were in state schools. The number has declined since then, as more and more Americans dissent with the established religion of state schools. Conant saw a dual system of schools as something which, quote, serves and helps to maintain group cleavages, End quote. This is true, but the Christian must answer that the alternative is a suppression of Christian training and ultimately of all religions, save humanism. The logical humanism of Karl Marx holds to such a suppression. The pragmatic humanism of John Dewey accomplishes it only a step at a time, but it is no less committed to it. Conan affirms his faith in state schools as the means to true moral and spiritual values of a democratic nature. He says, in part, quote, By organising our free schools on as comprehensive basis as possible, we can continue to give our children an understanding of democracy by practising it in school. Religious tolerances, mutual respect among vocational groups, belief in the rights of the individual, are among the virtues that the best of our high schools now foster. End quote. For Conan's faith, Christianity is an optional and private concern. Humanistic democracy is a necessary and Catholic faith, to be taught to all and held by all. Conan granted, quote, the rights of the individual, end quote, but not the rights of the group to their faith, nor of institutions such as Christian schools. He recognised the legal status pro tempore of the Christian school. He denied them a moral status as an evil. This is a part of a widespread trend in the modern world, quote, the process has been and is one of secularization or desacralization, that is, the elimination of religion as a symbolic representation of social integration. In other words, religion per se is no longer the force that binds a society together. 
Instead, a modern society is held together by a mutual interdependence of the parts of that society, including its institutions, end quote. This does not mean that the sacred is no longer with us. The modern state is divinizing itself. This was open and obvious with Stalin, Mao, Idi Amin, Nkrumah and others, but it is also true of all other states. We speak of national shrines. Treason is now an offence, not against God, but against the state. It is the modern equivalent of apostasy. Our holy days are now national holidays, and the central power in society is not God, but the state. The God of a society is the controlling force in a society. In the modern world, that power is the state. The God of Scripture controls man from within. The quote-unquote coercion is regeneration and new birth, when it does not do violence to the person or his will. Status coercion is external. It seeks to remake man by the total control of man's environment, mind and education. This school is the key to status coercion and control. Thus, Field, in dealing with the psychopath in our schools and at society, says that education, quote, will have to employ powerful controls upon individual freedom in order to break existing antisocial, quote, sets, unquote, habitual patterns, value systems, and the beliefs underlying them. The task will be to accomplish radical personal changes, end quote. Some already classify the Orthodox Christian as a social deviant or sociopath. In the Soviet Union, powerful controls are imposed on all such in slave labour camps, prisons and mental institutions. The savage ridicule in state schools here of Christian faith is already a fact. Field wants re-educational centres, which he says will not be, quote, full-blown concentration camps, end quote, because the prisoners can there, quote, freely challenge the values society in general requires of them, end quote, such a challenge would only be a ticket to a longer term, we would have to answer. Field is so sure of the moral position of his own kind that he sees no comparison between his view and that of fascists and Marxists. Like all inquisitors, he is too sure of his righteousness to doubt that what he does is for man's best interest. Thus, he concludes, quote, In summary, with regard to current educational needs, I am proposing, one, that powerful control over individual behaviour is not necessarily evil or anti-democratic. Two, that we already employ great controlling power in education. But three, that we do so very ineffectively because we try to hide the fact even from ourselves. And finally, four, that when we clearly understand the need for power, we will gradually require less of it because its application will be overt, direct, timely and hence necessarily more efficient. End quote. This is the democratic world of Orwell's 1984. More accurately, it is the world depicted by Ronald Huntford in The New Totalitarians. The old totalitarianism, according to Huntford, applies physical coercion and torture to bring men under control. The new totalitarians use the schools and mind control. Sweden represents the new model totalitarian state and its inspiration comes from American philosophies of education. The Swedish government hopes to introduce compulsory schooling at the age of three because a commission of inquiry found that behaviour is most easily influenced at that age. Pupils are taught to reject traditional authorities in favour of the new statist authorities. The results in Sweden are similar to those of Israel's kibbutzes and the schools of the Soviet Union. Scientific research has declined, Initiative is feared, quote, and the work is generally poor and unimaginative, end quote. Prime Minister Olaf Palme, in speaking to school children, said, quote, You don't go to school to achieve anything personally, but to learn how to function as members of a group, end quote. Hanford comments, quote, To remain outside the group is the sin against the Holy Ghost, and immense pains are taken to round up the independent and the unwilling, end quote. Sweden has been de-Christianized even more than Russia. The faith is seen as a form of mental illness. The purpose of education is to serve the state, is to serve the state and promote economic efficiency. This is the new model for democracy. Its great instrument of control is the state school. The struggle for Christian schools is the battle for the survival of biblical faith. The great community of humanism 
is simply Babylon, the great of Scripture, the great enemy of the faith and of Christian man. This audio version of The Philosophy of the Christian Curriculum, Russus J. Rushdeny, has been produced by Reconstructionist Radio and narrated by Nathan F. Conkey. Please visit calcedon.edu to download or purchase this book. The Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network brings to you a complete lineup of podcasts where you will hear practical and tactical theology. Our desire is not simply that you consume our shows, but that you also live out your faith in every area of life. We can talk all day long about these things, but if we fail to put them into practice, then we fail as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, our King. Subscribe now to your favorite Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network shows, or you can subscribe to the Reconstructionist Radio Master Feed, where all of the content we produce including the audiobooks and audio articles, will pop up as soon as they are available. And don't forget to visit ReconstructionistRadio.com to volunteer as a narrator or to partner with this ministry financially. May the Holy Spirit stir you into action for Christ and His kingdom.